Maneater is technically a terrible game, really badly designed, lots of issues and flaws, and yet, for the most part, I found myself really enjoying it and having loads of fun. So would I recommend it to you guys? Well, folks, I've got to be honest, I am completely split on this. The game has had me going from crying with laughter to crying in pain as my hand goes into cramps from the insane button mashing spam 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 of combat and a badly laid out control system. So I'm going to tell you what's good and bad about it and I'm afraid you're going to have to make your own minds up from that. Maneater is basically a shark RPG or a shark em up, Grand Theft Shark. It's kind of hard to describe because it's more or less an original idea for a game. You play a man-eating shark, hence the clever title. And that's just what you do, you swim around causing carnage, eating people. And eating a lot of fish as well unfortunately, which we'll get to in a minute. And yes, somehow they have actually managed to fit a story into this. You're a man-eating shark, out for revenge on a shark hunter. It's kind of a cool story when it comes all together, but unfortunately the game is let down with a lot of issues. Anyway, the good stuff first. Oh, and just for the sake of transparency, I did receive this copy for free for review purposes. Okay, by far and away, my favourite aspect of this game is just the fun factor. It's absolutely hilarious and silly. It is just silly. There's nothing about Maneater that even tries or pretends to be sensible. And I think this is a really cool thing. It's something that's lacking from a lot of games in the market. It's not just the really cool stuff that you can do, like in combat, when you almost bite someone in half and then spit them out and then whip your tail around and launch them halfway across the bay. Or just the very notion of this great big fat shark leaping out and lolloping down the streets and chasing people into their back gardens. Or even across the rooftops as I managed to do on one occasion. Or even just the really cool narration with lots of tongue in cheek references to other games and movies and all sorts of stuff. It just comes together in a really fun package. And it's had me laughing with glee so many times. This is the thing that I actually like the game for most of all. It's made me laugh out loud. And I can't say that about enough games anymore. And let's just talk about that narration a little bit more. They've actually used a professional actor to voice the narrator in this, and it really shows. The lines are delivered really well. It's actually delivered as if you are watching a documentary of Shark vs. Shark Hunter. Fishing boats are designed to catch a variety of fish, or for your brother-in-law Randy to drink a case of Coors Light and start a fist fight with a fishing boat. I am dead. But the writing and delivery of the lines is just really good, and it makes you feel like you are either taking part in or watching one of those sort of mockumentaries that you've seen on telly. And not only that, but there's loads of cool references to games and movies to find when you're milling about in the ocean, exploring is sometimes a bit of a chore, but the reward when you find these landmarks in it is usually worth it. It's completely different to the frantic combat side of the game, which we'll talk about more in a moment. But you get these cool references, and I'm not going to spoil any of them for you whatsoever. There's Easter eggs in there relating to other games, other movies, and there's also this kind of background message in there about humans destroying the oceans and the planet, but it's not delivered to you in a preachy sort of a way, it's delivered to you in a very humorous way. And all this, I think, is really well done. So as you can probably see from some of the background footage I've got playing for you here, the combat is extremely fast and frantic. I mean, it really is good, especially when you're getting these hunter boats coming after you. There's not a moment's pause. You don't get a chance to take a breath. You don't get a chance to stop and think. It's just move, fight, bite, spin, dive, jump, attack, spin, avoid, dodge. It's really, really good. It's frantic. It's just non-stop until you get away from them all and you go and just chill out for a bit because you do need to you need to chill out and rest in between the frantic combat sessions but i actually really liked it uh, there's a downside to this that i will come on to later however but the combat is another one of my favorite parts of the game it just feels so good when you leap out of the water pluck one of these shark hunters with his harpoon gun off the front of his boat dive back in and drag him down into the depths as you hear him gurgling and screaming as you slowly chomp on his innards 
And I think, unfortunately, the only other good thing I can say about the game is that it feels pretty original to me. Yeah, they've borrowed aspects, you know, one like these semi-open world things where you have to go and collect and find stuff. And yeah, they've borrowed those ideas. But the actual bit about playing a shark where you go around eating people, I have never come across a game quite like this. So yeah, let's, let's say it's original. Give it a thumbs up for that. Sadly, however, the list of things I didn't like about Manita probably outweigh the list of things that I did. And let's start off with the combat and it's the controls it's the damn controls i used a controller to play this game you can play it with mouse and keyboard obviously on pc but with a controller god damn was it just spam 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 button mash button mash button mash, button mash. and it was, it was that was it that was as intelligent and as tactical and strategic as the fights ever got. There are lots of different moves you can do, but the only one that really seemed to matter was the bite. Oh, and the lock on. Oh my God, there's no target lock on this. There's a temporary target lock, and on controller, you have to tap the right thumbstick down, but you've got to be fairly close to something. And as it moves out of a very, what seems like a very narrow cone in front of you, it loses target lock. So when you're swirling round and round and round something, trying to fight it, you're constantly having to repress the target lock. You can't hold it down. No, you can't hold it down. You have to tap, tap, tap. It's like tap, bite, tap, bite, tap, bite, swirl, jump, dodge, tap, bite, tap, bite. And I'm not kidding you. At the end of a four hour stream, my hand was going into cramp and I was getting pain in the knuckles from the intensity of trying to hold the stick down all the time or press it down all the time and bite on the right trigger and do the other stuff. And it was just damn painful. And by the time I finished the game, it's not a long game either, maybe I think it took me about 12, 15 hours. But even two weeks later, I'm still feeling the cramps in my knuckles from it. And no tight-fisted wanker jokes, please, in the comments. So that just could have been done a lot better. The whole control system could have been done an awful lot better. And if it wasn't just such a mad spam, 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 spam system of control, it might have been better. Just a simple lock-on would have helped a hell of a lot. But by God, did they really get to me. And speaking of the controls, it's better when you're in deep water and you're able to swim down and around all over the place. It's got this funny system when you get to the surface where it will lock you to the surface. Now this is a problem when you're fighting in fairly shallow water but where it's just deep enough to go under the surface. If that's where your target is, you'll go down, try and take a bite at a turtle or a fish or something, and as you move up, you'll suddenly find yourself locked, glued to the surface again, and have to then press the buttons in order to dive back down and reacquire your target. And I found that really damn awkward and really annoying. But not only are the combat techniques extremely repetitive, the whole game is, and the missions, which many of which are unengaging. It is a case, unfortunately, of go here, kill 10 fish, go there, kill 10 other fish, go here, kill 10 fish, go there, kill 10 fish. And you do this in every damn zone of the map. The only difference is that the name of the fish changes, and later on they become... Uh, they become predators. Uh, you, you have to go and kill 10 hammerhead sharks. And by that point, you are so leveled up and dangerous that they are not a threat to you, but the actual effort to kill each one is a lot more. And by oh God, it's a grind at the end, but you have to do these to advance the story. There's just no thought, unfortunately, gone into the missions. The ones we have to go and kill 10, 15, 20 humans, now they are repetitive but they're a hell of a lot funnier and a lot more enjoyable and i've got to say as repetitive as, as those are i didn't mind them as much because you, well come on chomping humans down and slaughtering them is a lot funnier than eating fish let's be honest but there's even a problem with the eating of the humans unfortunately and that is that they don't do anything to escape you swim up to a bay, and there they all are, on their inflatable lilos, inflatable pink unicorns, swimming about, some on the beach having a barbecue. You surface, someone will see your fin, and they go, ooh, shark, shark! And then you eat the first one, and they're screaming all around you, and they just sit there in the water, as you swim right up to them, and eat them, and they're screaming, but they don't do anything to get away. Even when you jump onto the beach, yeah, you jump out of the beach. It's, it looks crazy, but it's again, it's something that had me laughing and I actually liked. And as you lollop around on the beach eating people, they don't do anything to get out of the way. They, they just mill around it, where they're stood near the shark. 
The only time I ever had an issue where one tried to get away was when I had to kill so many humans in one zone and the last one somehow got onto the roof of his house. Yeah, he took a bit of hunting down and I did manage to eventually jump up there and get him. Again, the notion, just the notion of that has me laughing as I remember it. Shark climbing up onto the roof of a house to kill someone. But, the, it, oh man, just the, the AI of the people, it's just, it could be so much better done. Other missions are just similarly unengaging as well, I've got to say, where you have to go and... It's like one of these silly games where they just put stuff in to make you go and collect stuff. In this case, it's car number plates, or license plates, if you live in the States. And I think there's some other things to collect I've, I've forgotten. I had no interest in that, to be honest. Uh, the only things worth going to, to find and collect are the landmarks, like I said before. They, they do unlock an armor set, and they're actually really worth looking out for the, for the cool little references they have. But overall, the missions are terrible. You do have some, I guess you can call them boss shark hunters to take out, but they're, well, they're basically piss easy to take down, to be quite honest. Some of them, I didn't even have to destroy the boats, I swear, I just jumped out the water, grabbed them off the boat and ate them, and that suddenly was boss fight over. And by the time you fight the big bosses, or the bigger bosses towards the end, you, you just feel invincible, and it's just a case of just going through the motions until you kill them. Similar with the ending of the game, which I won't spoil, but it, it felt very underwhelming to me, not just the fight, but the story as well. But this leads me to summing up the game overall. I've been in such a split mind over this and what rating to give it. Do I give it a 6 out of 10 because of its flaws? Do I give it a 7 out of 10 because it's made me laugh? And just thinking back on some of the silly exploits, it still makes me laugh now at what we did. However, but two weeks on and my hand still hurts from the, uh, the control system and the spamming and the cramping and the mashing of buttons, I really don't know. Uh, would I go back and play it? I think maybe if you had a lot of patches and upgrades, I'd play through it a second time, but I'm certainly not going to play through it again uh, based on the, on the control system, unfortunately. So, that leaves me to try and rate the game. And I think I've got to give it a 6 out of 10. Uh, I, was, I was at one point moving towards a 7, but no, because of the, the issues that it's got, it's got to be a 6. You might not mind some of the things I have listed off and you might really enjoy it or you might look at this and look at how unengaging some of the missions are and think it's completely pointless but I will say it was a whole lot of fun while it lasted and not many games make me cry with laughter anyway there's a link below to my entire playthrough if you want to go and check it out